In this video I'm going to explain why it is that when we calculate the residual standard deviation for pulse counted data we end up with a value close to unity. And the reason that this residual standard deviation is close to unity is related to how we understand the uncertainty within XPS data. So if we look at these three conditions of what we expect for XPS data then if these three conditions are satisfied then statistics tells us that the uncertainty in the counts per bin will be the square root of the counts per bin. So that makes life very easy. Now let's consider these three conditions. So the probability that a single counting event occurring in a small time interval of length delta t is approximately equal to the count rate times the interval of time. In other words, the counts per second times time gives us the number of counts that we ought to expect. That's exactly what we expect to find for XPS data, is that the counts in a data bin in a spectrum is proportional to the length of time that we measure for that data bin. So the first is clearly satisfied. The probability of more than one counting event occurring in a small time interval delta t is negligible when compared to a single counting event occurring in the same time interval. Well that also is an assumption that we make for pulse counted data from XPS because if the count rate is too high then our detectors will saturate. So we have to make sure that our detectors aren't saturated otherwise quantification will be difficult. So we necessarily measure our data under this regime. So the second condition is satisfied. And then the number of counting events in overlapping time intervals are independent. Yes, that is also true. When we measure a spectrum, we expect to measure oxygen and get a count rate for oxygen, and then at a later time measure carbon, and then any other elements in the sample. And what we're assuming then is that it doesn't matter when we measure these counts, whatever time interval we choose they are quite independent of time and therefore we can quantify carbon against oxygen or silicon. They all occur as independent events in separate time intervals. So yes this third condition is also what we expect for XPS data. So when we have these three conditions then we have the conditions that are necessary for Poisson distributed uncertainty in our counts and lambda being the counts, because it's the count rate times the time, then Poisson distributed random variables have an expected value that's equal to lambda, well that's the counts, and the variance in the random variable is equal to lambda also. So this means that the uncertainty that is calculated as the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, therefore the uncertainty in lambda which are the counts, is the square root of lambda. So we know how to calculate the uncertainty in our data because XPS satisfies these conditions that are necessary for Poisson statistics. So we now need to work out why it is that the residual standard deviation is equal to unity for a curve that fits data. And the reason is because the residual standard deviation is calculated from the difference between the data in each data bin and the curve that fits the data. So in this case, two curves in two different intervals are fitting the data. The curves are in fact straight lines that are fitting in a least square sense. So we end up with a distribution of information either side of these straight lines. And this is what we want to characterize by this residual standard deviation by looking at these differences between the, the data and the curve. But because we know that the uncertainty in each data bin is expected to be the square root of the counts per bin, this is a measure of the difference that we ought to see between the data and the curve. So these two entities, the difference of the data from the curve and the square root of the counts per bin, these both ought to be very close in value to each other. So when we take a ratio, each term should be close to unity and then we sum n of these and then divide by n so we ought to end up with a number that is very close to unity and if we take the square root of that that will actually take it closer to unity so ultimately 
the residual standard deviation is close to unity for pulse counted data because we know that the uncertainty in each data bin obeys Poisson statistics and we can factor that out of each one of these calculations for a measure of how close a curve fits data. And this is quite important in the sense that what we're doing is we are normalizing against changes in intensity. So we know that in a peak maximum the uncertainty is much greater in the value in an absolute sense than in the background. But if we use a measure such as residual standard deviation then by dividing by the uncertainty that we know from Poisson statistics what we're doing is we are making a fit to data in a peak maximum equal in importance to a fit to a curve that is in the background because this entity will scale and produce a number close to unity when we have a fit that is good to the peak maximum as well as in the background. So in this sense this statistic is intended to make all points in a spectrum used in a peak fit of equal importance.